I know we're limited in here to space, but we're going to have to, we're going to, have to shut these doors because the outer the outer group wants to talk and and uh, have a good time, and we're in here to listen to Mr. Paul. So we we need to. It'll get hotter. I'll I'll make sure everybody. We need to get everybody in so we can shut those. Not the back back doors. I'm talking about these doors right here in front of me. These double doors here. <laughs> We're, we're limited in space, and if you can't get in, why, well, we'll have the same show next year. <laughs> you come back. <laughs> you like to hear that. You start charging next year. Well, <laughs> I'll see you give you a rain check, so. Whatever that is. Huh? We got we got to be quiet. I mean, let's let's. Uh, it's either me talk or y'all talk. Yeah. Uh, we we want to re respect this man and his music, and he's got some wonderful things to share with us. And everybody wants to hear. What? Turn the cell phones off too. Don't, yeah. don't get it too thick, or... Rich. <laughs> I think he did up real good last year. He really liked it. I said, of all the pickers I know, he's one of them. <laughs> and he's still one of them. But he's a real treasure to all of us, and I know you love him, and I do too. Let's give Paul Yandel a hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got a bad sinus problem and I'm always coughing carrying on so you don't have to deal with him and I, I bought a cough drop. So. <laughs> um, you know, I did, I, I think it's about the second, the third year I've done this, done this, talk about Chet, pick a little bit answer questions or whatever, so, so people seem to like it and I enjoy doing it. And I bought uh, uh, Mark Thornton with me. He works with Jerry Reed. He's one of my good buddies and uh, he's going to render out a couple. And uh, he can do it, friends. He knows where he's at. I brought uh, my Nashville Classic. How many of you have seen my new website? It's excellent. Boy, excellent. It's good. Great. I'm sort of proud of that. Uh, uh, Trevor Raby, the guy that did uh, the cover on my uh, new CD drive on, he uh, did that. He's a fan of mine. I do have one or two, but but he's a great guy and he's a professional artist and he's got a website. Y'all don't check his website. He's got a link to it and he draws automobiles and motorcycles. It looked just like a photograph. Anyway, he suggested that he do that. And I said, well, okay. So I started sending him pictures of all that old junk I got. And, uh, <laughs> and it's turned out pretty good. I'm going to try to play one here. I won't guarantee anything. That's just good music, man. I am. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I'll tell you a little news. Jerry wouldn't mind me telling you because he's proud of it. But Jerry's had really bad trouble with his hands for about five years. He got what's called non-essential tremors, not Parkinson's disease, but it's I think it's hereditary and you uh, your hand starts doing this. And uh, uh, he, both his hands are doing that, and it got so bad that he couldn't drink a cup of coffee. I mean, it just, I'd go have lunch with him, and it was like this. So naturally, he couldn't play much. Well, he called about three weeks ago and said the doctor has found some medicine that uh, stabilizing that. And he said, I think I'm going to be able to play again. <laughs> one morning we'll take some questions. Don't expect any answers, but soft after you took a little bit they start getting a, a grainy edge there and I keep smoothing them down you know but anyway that's what I'm using right now is that. anybody else I got a question you may have told me before but how did you personally when did you personally meet Chet and how uh, I've told you so much it's, well, I hadn't heard it so tell me 
<laughs> There'll be car keys rattling when I start telling it. <laughs> uh, tell me later. Uh, I came to Nashville to audition with the Grand Old Opera. I was so ignorant. When I was a kid, I thought we'd well, go down there. And, uh, I thought it was pretty good. And uh, so I went down and back then, on Wednesday afternoon, I believe it was, uh, George D. Hay auditioned people for about 30 minutes. And uh, I found out some way in, about it, and it was a friend of mine drove me down there. Uh, uh, I didn't have a car, and, and uh, we came down there. And it was up at 7th and Union at the old Studio C studio. And so uh, I waited my turn out there in the hall. And, so finally, they, everybody, they, they got around to me, and, and, and George D. Hay came out and said, well, I'm sorry, son, we ain't got time to, for you. He said, we're running out of time. Or he said, uh, you're next, maybe that's the way it was. And I said, well, I got to go down to the car and get my guitar now. He said, well, we don't have time for that. Just a few minutes. And so Chet was uh, rehearsing the, uh, the PA show, Prince Albert show, around this, in Studio C. And he was out there smoking a cigarette. And he heard that. Just pick one, Paul. We love you, Paul. We love you, buddy. Showcase where the, 
I need to take it out. You can't do that. I probably could, but so I got in there and I just measured the neck and measured everything. And I already knew what the pickups were because uh, uh, I put that fader in his guitar. I had his guitar and brought it home and kept it for <coughs> three or four times, so I was aware of it. And uh, so they made three of them, and this is the second prototype. And I didn't get it for nothing, folks. I had to buy this. <laughs> 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 I had a handkerchief in your pocket. Where? Nothing. <coughs> Thanks, Tom. And uh, I got it cheaper than what you got. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I deserved it. <laughs> I was so happy when I got it, uh, I knew that it was going to be great. And I knew it was going to put the Gibson uh, Country Gentleman out of business because it was its just the best guitar that I've ever owned. And it's got the best sound. You know, right. The Country Gentleman Gibson Country Gentleman is a great guitar, high quality, but this one's got the sound. And uh, it's got great sustain. And I got this, I want to tell you about this fine tuner here. Uh, this thing is really good. Uh, now, I put new strings on this about an hour ago. I tuned it up and I locked it down and I'm in tune, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but this thing really works and it adds to your sustain as a side uh, thing to it. I mean, I didn't expect it to do that. But it really does. It, it gives you more sustain. So they're a little expensive. I mean, they're hundred fifty dollars, which ain't cheap, friends. And it ain't cheap to me. But if you save up your egg money, why? Well, as I used to say when I was a kid. <laughs> why? Well, that's how I bought things. I saved up the. Money. Who, who, who makes that, Paul? Uh, this fellow out here, his name is uh, Reynolds. Oh, Reynolds. Reynolds. What does it do, Paul? I'm Thank you. It. It's a fine tuner. I got you. You, like, you get tuned, you, you lock it down, and then you just fine tune it. And it's like you can use your Bible and you stay in tune. You can play that Van Halen yeah. stuff. <laughs> no, you can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Chet Atkins meet. <laughs> I'm going to tell some funny stories about Chet. <laughs> Chet was really funny. Of course, uh, he always said I was funny, but I, I didn't think so. But he <laughs> I never knew what it was funny or funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that Eric Johnson, you all know that guy. Yeah, he oh, yeah. down in Austin. He's a tremendous guitar player. So uh, Chet was we played down there and he came backstage with some people and we just got acquainted with him. Well anyway, he came to Nashville and, he, and they used to have a concerts down here by the river, they call it Riverfront Park. So he played down there. So Chet went down to see him. Next day he said, I went down there to see him. Eric Johnson and said he had two amplifiers as big as a refrigerator. <laughs> Tell you this story now. This is I never have told this, and if Chet was here, he'd be embarrassed by it. But it's funny, yeah. <laughs> and it, re it really happened. After Chet got sick, he couldn't drive, and uh, he would get his friends come over and give you want to go somewhere. He, he liked to come out on the opera on Saturday night <coughs> and uh, sit backstage and talk to his old friends and all that. Well, one uh. It was in the, it was sort of getting cold, it was about November, it was Bill Carlisle's birthday. And it's a meat three restaurant out in Goodlettsville. And they were gonna have that, just a little get together, and so they was, they invited a bunch of uh, Grand Ole Opry stars who were contemporaries of Bill Carlisle. Chet and Bill Carlisle were the best of friends, they worked together back in Knoxville, and, and uh, I think Chet played fiddle for him. And all that. 
Anyway, she had called me and said, you want to go out to Bill Carlisle's birthday party? And I said, yeah, great, because I, I used to work with Bill Carlisle back when I was young. Uh, when I was with the Lewin brothers, when they wasn't working, well, I'd go out with Bill Carlisle, and that was a trip, friends. <laughs> <laughs> and, so anyway, I went over and got checked, and we go out there, and uh, uh, Carl Smith and Goldie Hill was there, and little Jimmy Dickens. Uh, uh, you know what's Riddle's name? Georgie. Georgie Riddle. And uh, let's see who else was there. Maybe Gene Shepard. <coughs> but anyway, there was about 20 of us there, and so they, we ate and socialized and this and that. So the woman that owned that restaurant, she weighed about 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. She was a big one, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was uh, Bill Chetna, it had these uh, bench type things, you know. So Chet and I was sitting like this. Chet was sitting here on the end, I was on the inside. Carl Smith was sitting on the next seat there, and then Goldie was sitting facing him. And Bill Carlisle was sitting right across the aisle, right here, in this seat. Well, this woman that owned the place, she goes and puts a Santa Claus suit on. <laughs> and she come out with some presents to give Bill. So she was standing there. Uh, she bent over <laughs> and laid down the present in front of Bill, and they was talking, and she had her hands on the table like this. Well, Carl Smith took his fork <laughs> and goosed her. <laughs> she turned around and said, Woo! She said, watch it. You do that? And it just embarrassed him. So <laughs> and he got so upset and he said, hell no way with me is that son of a bitch right there. <laughs> but I laughed so I liked to cry. You know, when we left, he got the car and he said, that, that damn car was me. <laughs> he talked about that all the way. <laughs> he said, that son of a bitch said he was ignorant when he was in Knoxville. He still is. <laughs> Chad hardly ever got upset, but he got so embarrassed, you know, and uh, that was one thing that he couldn't stand is being embarrassed. He had so much pride. But, uh, see, I'm going to tell something else. I, maybe I can remind me. What is it? Give me a hint. What? That ain't going to work, Paul. You got that thing locked down. <laughs> no coaching from the office. <laughs> I have three or four stories. <laughs> You can lock down only the if you want to. top three if you want to. Okay. Lock down all six of them. Uh, Michael, what was I going to tell you? Remember? <laughs> well, <laughs> there ain't no stories to tell about that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell something about Chet. This is a Chet deal. So. <laughs> now, maybe I'll think of it. I have three things to tell you. The way it is, you get old Mark, come up here, you rascal. Mark Thornton, let's give him a hand here. He's going to get his uh, guitar. My wife is here today. Folks, uh, careful. She's a 
Bought the beans for many years. What about your daughter-in-law? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Stand up, Marie. Or Cherie. <laughs> yeah, that's Michael's wife. She's sort of shy. Hey, Mark. Hey, what about her sister-in-law? Well, <laughs> is there any end of this? <laughs> Stand up, Georgie. I'll teach you to come and watch me play. This is my court, Mark. You sure? Yes. I tell you, folks, Mark is one of the great guitar players in Nashville. He, he don't play a lot now. He's uh, got a studio and, he's, and he does that, you know. I don't play enough to really be doing this, but let me turn it out. You don't want to get tunes out there. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
What's your favorite Chet song, and could you play it for us? I really don't. Uh, I like all this stuff. Well, play all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all of them. You know, I don't play much anymore. This is the most I've played wow. since last year. You need to get Rick Allred to play them. He knows everything Chet ever played. <laughs> this reminds me, all you, you old timers like me, you remember this back when I was a kid. We used to listen to the battery radio, and there was a radio show called Mr. IQ. And there was a guy, a moderator, and they'd go out in the audience with a mic, 
and people would ask Mr. IQ a question and he'd answer it. <laughs> I thought her, uh, assume I'm Mr. IQ. Yeah. What's the, the little block you have on there for, is that like a hand? Uh, that's something I came up with, a hand rest. Uh, it, it always bothered me when I was trying to play single string like this, which I, I can't very well. But I was always having to hold my hand there. So I got the idea to make a little hand rest to it. Chet liked that. He said, you ought to patent that. And of course, it takes about, it costs about $10,000 to patent something. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pardon? Forever, Chet. Forever, Chet. Didn't you that much? You know, I hadn't played that since I recorded. Uh, Craig Dobbins played that today. Uh, I know I can't play it. <laughs>
And uh, I feel what I played probably, uh, I don't know, dark eyes. And I was trying to play those things that you had to, I was horrible, I couldn't play, but everybody else was worse than me, so I felt <laughs> <laughs> You know, everything's relative, you know, they were so bad that I sounded good. <laughs> anyway, Odell played, and I was sitting down in the audience waiting to play, and he got up there and played, and he was so funny, typical Odell thing. Uh, you, in the category he played, you had to read music. So he had his cousin to hold a sheet music up in front of him, he played St. Louis Blues. And everybody thought he was reading the music, and he was just standing there playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, you know, of course, uh, he's the first, he was really good, he, I, he was better than me, I always thought he, he was a lot better guitar player than I was. I got a better tone than he did, but he knew more notes. <laughs> anyway, we became fast friends, and uh, stayed in touch and everything, and so when I got out of high school, uh, in a year, I, I was lucky enough to come to Nashville and uh, get a job with Louis Brothers. And we, and he and I stayed in touch, and I go down to his house and stay all night with his folks. And he wanted to come to Nashville, like me, you know, that was everybody's dream. And uh, so he got out of school, and as I said before, I've been working with Bill Carlisle. Well, I was working with Louis too, and they got real busy, so Bill Carlisle wanted to hire a regular guitar player. So I, I went down to him, Bill, I wrote him a letter or something. And I got him a, an audition with Bill Carlisle. He came up there and um, he, he played for Bill and he hired him on the spot. And uh, I had a room over in this lady's house and so he moved in with me and we stayed together about four years. And uh, we were just like brothers. Somebody was, uh, somebody had put together, I'm not sure, one of, the, one of the players had put together a compilation of all the Odell Martin stuff, uh, you know, recordings. Do you rem remember who that oh, was? Uh, unfortunately, Odell never recorded any quality stuff. Right. He would just go to somebody's house and they'd turn the tape recorder on and record, you know, and it sounded bad, like he was in the parking lot and whatever. Mm -hmm. Playing great, but just sounded bad, and he might could have a hum in it and all that yeah. crap, you know. So they he pity to put out a tape maybe several, eight years ago of Everything he could find. That's what I was thinking. And then yeah. Bobby Anderson of Drakesboro put that out, but I'm not sure if it's still available. Um, I hate to talk so much, but all this stuff is interesting, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. What? A couple of the jokes the chap used to tell in his performances when you go and travel together. Mm -hmm. He always has little jokes that you can tell. one he about. always told was about going to school and carrying his carrying his lunch in a, in a lard bucket. Y'all remember that? Yeah. You remember that? What's that in my mouth? Tom? Anyway, <laughs> no. It was similar to a hair. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't down here anymore. <laughs> kid that's real poor and he had to carry his lunch in a, in a lard bucket. You know, back in the old days, a lard bucket about like cat is made of tin. And kids carried their uh, lunch in it. So he said one day, he uh, and he had to leave them in a cloakroom. You know, back then, you pulled your coats off and you hung them up in a cloakroom and he left your lunch pail in there. Well, it, it, I'm trying to remember this. One day, he was thought he'd have a better lunch and so he ran back and got somebody else's lard bucket uh, lunch pail and ran down in the woods with it and he opened it up and there was a hammer and a wild hickory nut in it. <laughs> <laughs> We play a symphony, he'd tell that. <laughs> <laughs> All those uh, uppity people that laugh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? He came to Fort Wayne, Indiana one time, and he said that he wanted us to know that, you know, he's from the country, but they were pretty modern. He said, we, uh, 
we just uh, carpeted our bathroom. Yeah. We liked it so well, we took it all the way to the house. <laughs> <laughs> he got a lot of that stuff over home with Jethro. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like he'd say, Mr. S Mr. Simmons. Bring me some sand. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to tell you. Um, Chet liked to watch TV in the morning. He, 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 uh, he watched that guy, that, that mean ass guy, excuse me, that's on live up there in New York. He's terribly. Hi, Don Imus. Yeah. He watched him all the time. I don't like him because he's so mean to people. <laughs> he's worse than Larry King. Jeff said Larry King was one of the meanest people you ever seen. <laughs> he was what he said. He told me all those things about people. But anyway, <laughs> he he watched Jerry Springer a lot. And uh, one he lay on. A, he came on about nine o'clock. So he called me one morning. He said, Hey, Paul. I said, yeah, Chet. And he says, there's some of your kin folks on here. <laughs> and I said, really? He said, yeah, turn that on Channel 5. I said, some of your kin folks on there. So I turned on Channel 5, and it was his mama and her daughter. <laughs> And this daughter's husband, the son-in-law, from up in Harlan County, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, folks, the people from Harlan County, we could write a book on them. <laughs> but they were in an argument, and they were calling each other ever so a bitch. You could say. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the funniest thing, and they almost got in a fight. And... Uh, <laughs> My kid folks. You know. <laughs> he was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you another thing, talking about Bill Carlisle. Bill Carlisle gave him a rooster once. And uh, he built a little old wire pen out of a chicken wire thing around there outside his garage. And uh, uh, finally, a snake got in there and killed that rooster. And uh, I think he used to get Muriel Anderson to feed it for him. She'd come out there and he'd, he'd send Muriel out there to feed his rooster. But <laughs> anyhow, one day I was over at his office. Uh, we went to lunch two or three times a week. And so he, I got over there and he said, uh, uh, Paul, I want you to do something for me. I said, okay, Jeff, what is it? He said, uh, I want you to write a letter uh, to Bill Carlisle from Porter Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to understand that Bill Carlisle hates, hated Porter Wagner. <laughs> I mean, he hated him up and down. So he explained this to me, you know, said, Bill Carlisle can't stand Porter Wagner, just hates him. He said, I want you to write a letter like it's from Porter to him. And tell him about how you think his career is going and all this stuff, you know, and anything you can do for him and all that. So I won't <laughs> mail it to him. So I said, okay. So I, I, I fixed up a letterhead some way to make it look official, you know. And uh, I believe I typed it up or something. I got my wife to do it. I wrote it out. But I, I said, you know, it was a whole bunch of, I can't remember everything I said, but I just ran on and on, you know. I said, oh, Hey, Bill, this is Porter, and I'm just so proud of you. you your career has done so, so well of, through the years and everything, and I just want you to know if there's anything I can do for you to help your career along. I, said, I want you to call on me. So Chet mailed that to Bill Carlisle. In about two or three days, Bill Carl called him back and said, Hey! <laughs> He call he had a funny name for Chet, something like honey. It wasn't honey. It was like, hey. He said, did you, did you send me this letter from before? <laughs> he said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I got that damn letter from Porter Wagner. But I know you sent it. <laughs> it was sort of he had to be there to see it. It was so funny. <laughs> they put <laughs> uh, <laughs> and 
Dingo Wise was longer. Uh, but uh, they put Bill Carlisle on the on the Porter show, boy, and he'd he'd be right. You know. <laughs> oh, uh, a good friend of mine. I've known him since he was about 13 years old, and I look after him like he's my own. Rip Wilson, stand up. Rip. I can't do that. Well, there you go. Know. <laughs> Post on the chat board there, but uh, he got tired of paying his phone bill, so he just <laughs> used his cell phone now. He's smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, he knows more about Nashville and, and uh, everything. I tell you, he could write a book on this place. He is so, he's one of the funniest people I know. I guess it's time for me to play one more because we're going to. Uh, oh, I got a question since you brought up. Oh, here. excuse me. Um, you're that troublemaker. He, said, he says that he says that uh, Chet plays the banjo. Yeah, he plays drop. He plays drop to him. Yeah, uh, I do too. But uh, Chet just like that, you know. He did, you know that old stuff. And I, I think that's the greatest banjo way to play a banjo ever. Yeah. I just love it. I agree. And Mike Snyder is a good friend of mine, and he's, I think he's the best. He plays all that Celtic stuff, you know. And, uh, I wonder who that was back there. Ed leaving while I was talking. <laughs> I did. Be quiet, Bob. You'll be on that one. <laughs> Give me a chance, will you? <laughs> but uh, he had an old banjo, uh, one of those white things or something, and uh, he played. And uh, after Chet died, what? Uh, he had a neck, a banjo neck, and Leona gave it to me, and I had a, had me a banjo made, and so I decided I'd learn to play that. <laughs> I flew with it about six months, and I thought, oh, what am I doing that? I'm trying to learn to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time to call it a day, folks, we call it everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Any, one more question, then we'll play one, then we'll, that'll be it till next year. I know everybody's had a good time. I have, and I'm sorry I can't talk about it yet. But <laughs> no more questions. One more guitar question. Okay. There's an extra button on the bottom by your two buttons on it there. That. Yeah. Uh, that the tone switch I put in there. I got a couple of capacitors on that, but. Uh, I don't use it. It's just something I experimented with. No. And I, I cut a hole in the back with a plate where you can get in there and touch, you know. I'm a poor man's left ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always trying to find solutions, you know, and uh, sometimes I do. Hi, Charlie, how are you? Great guitar player from Houston. Charlie, I forgot your last name. Charlie Cash, how could I remember? <laughs> <laughs> I've known Charlie for many years. He used to work down at uh, a great music store down there. He can really play, folks. Well, all right, let me see. Let me think of some. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to play. I've really enjoyed this, and thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.